Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have my November favorites and fails of the month and it was actually last month that I started incorporating these fails into the video because I felt like beforehand I was doing like full-on disappointing products videos, but I feel like it's a little more beneficial for me to keep you guys updated on these every single month, the products that were kind of flops for me, as opposed to just like waiting until I have enough to film a video. So I felt like this format worked out a little bit better for my channel. So I'm going to be sharing some products that I'm loving, some products that I'm not loving. I have a makeup technique I've been loving this month. So if you want to hear some of my favorites and a couple fails from the month of November, let's go ahead and hop into it. Oh, I did film this look. I'm very behind on editing videos that I have for Instagram. So just know that I'm, it, it is filmed, but who knows when it's coming. But I used, actually, no, I didn't use this. I used three palettes. I used the Profusion Mini Violet and then the Juvia's Place Deuce and Magic. And I feel like this is a really fun purpley look, very wintry, I feel. So if you want to see that, it's going to be up on my Instagram pretty soon, hopefully. But let's start off with the first fail. And this is a product that I don't have with me because I cannot find it. I, I know I didn't throw it away, but I don't know where it is. Let me check one more spot. I knew that I didn't throw it away. I found it. So this is the Profusion Lash Out Loud Mascara. So first, let me start off by saying this is not an expensive product. So I mean... I don't want to say you're getting what you pay for because a lot of times you can buy affordable mascaras that are amazing. So you know what? I won't make an excuse for this, but this is horrible. I would not recommend it. You might have seen me use this product in my testing new drugstore holiday makeup video because this actually comes in one of the Profusion kits for the holidays. And it's only $3. You get this mini mascara and a mini glitter. And in the video, I told you guys that they're both pretty bad and I would not recommend either of them but in particular this mascara if you saw it in the video i sat there for so long to build it up like the video doesn't even do justice to how long i sat there building it up because i mean parts of the video get clipped out so it's not just 10 minutes of me applying mascara but i sat there for an eternity and all it was doing was coating the lashes with a little bit of color but it was not lengthening them it definitely was not volumizing them maybe like slight length but for me, if you want to buy an affordable mascara, check out Essence, check out Koki, like there, there are other options. But ironically, my other fail is an Essence mascara type of product. So this, okay, the Profusion one is a complete fail. I really don't know. I can't think of a single person that would enjoy that formula unless you already have amazing lashes and you just want to coat them. Or maybe you don't want to look like you're wearing mascara. You just want some color on them. Otherwise, I can't think of anyone. This, I do think some people would like. It just kind of depends. So this is the Essence Volume Booster Lash Primer. And I first got into lash primers with the CoverGirl Lash Primer, which is amazing. It is my favorite. And I was hoping that this would compare to it. And this is decent, but it's, it's nothing compared to my CoverGirl. So here's a little look at the wand. It's a nice thickness, but it's, it's very long, but I don't really mind that. It is a white mascara primer. It does get very dirty up here, if you can see that. Now, this I find gives me clumping. So that's why I personally don't like it, but I do think some people could like it because I know we have very different preferences for mascara. I know some people enjoy the clumpy look as long as it looks like intensity on the lashes. So if you want that, you probably get it with this. But for me, I like my lashes to look fluttery and very separated. So that's why I like the CoverGirl one because it does not matter how much I apply and then go in with a different mascara on top. They're still gonna be separated, long, and beautiful. But this product I just find to be very finicky and I feel like it doesn't work with a lot of mascaras. So if you try to pair this with a mascara that's already known for being kind of volumizing, like it is gonna be Clump City. The only mascara I've been able to get this to work with, or it's, it's a couple mascaras, all the ones from the Physicians Formula Organic Wear line. So these are, it's like, it's from the organic wear line. It's from like the more natural looking makeup line. So this is not the super bam in your face eyelash mascara, but it pairs really well with this. Like together, this is a great combo. That's why I've been getting use out of this or how I've been getting use out of this. But if I try to pair this with the mascara I'm wearing today on its own, which is the Mad Lash from the Balm, that's already kind of volumizing. 
mm, kind of clumpy. And when I've paired it with my other mascara that I just finished up, Ciate Wonderland, oh my gosh, so clumpy. So this I think some people would like. And if you find the right mascara to pair it with, you can get a nice result. But it's just such a finicky primer for me. And I've tried other lash primers that work with everything. And this I just find can be a little tricky. And usually I end up quite clumpy. With that, let's move on to some favorites. Actually, let me start with my favorite technique of the month. I used to try to include these a while ago in my favorites videos and I kind of got away from it, but I want to start incorporating these again. So I mentioned this technique in a get ready with me that I'll leave linked down below. Said in that video that this is not a real credit card. This is a gift card that's already been used. So no worries sharing the numbers, but I've been using this or just any sort of a stiff card or cardboard or paper or whatever, just be gentle, and using that to kind of get a nice winged liner. So I'll take my brush and use this as a guide so that I don't have to use tape on my eyes because I do like using tape on my eyes. It gives you a really sharp look, but it can be a little bit uh, tuggy against the skin and you know, you wanna be extremely gentle. This skin is so thin, so using this is a lot easier for me. I don't have to rip at my skin and it's nice because I can just use this over and over again. I don't have to keep using tape, throwing it away. So that has been my go-to technique for the month. Oh, wait a minute. I have one more fail actually, but it ties in with a favorite. So I'm gonna save it until we get into that part, but let's start with this. I really like this. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. I wear 9W, it's slightly dark for me, but I can make it work because, okay. When it comes to shade matching, the rule of thumb is the higher the coverage, the better the shade match needs to be, but the lighter the coverage, you have a little bit more flexibility. So because this is kind of a light to medium level of coverage, I find that I can make it work, but if I wore this color in a full coverage foundation, it would be very clear that it doesn't match. So this is a kind of a unique tinted moisturizer. I love tinted moisturizers. I, I use them often, but this formula is extremely thin and it's interesting. Even I shake it pretty significantly before I pump it out and I still find that it, it looks almost like it's separated when I pump it on the back of my hand, but I've never noticed any issues with the formula because of that. For me, the coverage of this it sits around medium. It's a lighter medium coverage, but you can kind of build it up. And I find that when I pair this with some concealer and a little bit of powder over the skin, I feel like I get a very decent level of coverage. I can wear this a little bit lighter without those products accompanying it and wear it a little more natural and fresh. Or when I utilize that technique with you know pairing it with other products, I find that I get a full glam look and I, Sometimes I don't like to wear tinted moisturizers when I have more of a full glam look on the eyes and other parts of the skin. But with this, I find that it's, it's pretty flexible in that sense. I really do like to set this down because it's quite tacky and very dewy. It's a little too dewy for my preference, even with dry skin. If you set it down pretty lightly, I don't think that it looks dry or anything like that. Now I do have dry skin. I'm kind of more like normal to dry. I'm not extremely dry, especially not right now this time of year. But if you have oily skin, I think you might be able to make it work if you prep your skin nicely and also set it. But I'd love to hear from those of you out there that have oily skin, what your experience with this is because it's a quite dewy product. Now I find that it lasts a pretty decent amount of time. I mean, keep in mind, this is a tinted moisturizer. It's not going to perform like a foundation. So if you're kind of expecting that going into it, you're going to be disappointed. But for a tinted moisturizer, this is a great formula and my skin always looks so smooth and radiant and just healthy. And I think the name Pretty Fresh is very accurate because it makes you look really fresh, very awake, honestly just effortless. So when I wear that, I feel like I just look like that's my natural skin. I didn't do a ton. Similar to this, but this I find to be a little bit more perfecting, and this is my other favorite foundation this month. This is the Bare Minerals Matte Foundation. This is kind of newer. This is not new at all, but I picked this up at TJ Maxx. I wear the shade 8. Not a perfect shade match for me, but you know, at TJ Maxx, sometimes you have to take what you can get. I've been looking to see if I can find an even better shade match to maybe pick up as well for uh, different times of the year when I'm not as tan. But I tried the regular or the original formula in Bare Minerals a 
year or two ago and I really I I love powder foundations I love the way they look but that one it's very radiant on the skin and I almost found that it was too shiny I don't love being super shiny in my forehead I don't mind being glowy everywhere else but as I've said before I'm more on the dry side now but growing up especially in like my high school middle school age I was very oily so these days I kind of resent ever looking oily because of that so I don't like anything that's too dewy so that's why I really like the matte formula and I don't even find that it's too matte when I prep my skin well so I've told you guys before my sunscreen is almost a little bit greasy so that in itself gives me a really glowy base so when I use that with a primer and this it's perfection. I I will say with my dry skin, when I've tried to pair it with more mattifying primers, it's too, it's too matte and it doesn't look great. However, when I pair this, probably my favorite primer with this is the High Adherent Silicone Primer from The Ordinary. You will look like a smooth, poreless dream with these together. This is great. I like to use it with, I have two brushes from e.l.f. One is a a foundation brush from them but also they have a mineral powder brush which I like to use and oh my goodness Kelly I left this open I didn't close the cap completely and I made a bit of a mess whoops but when you're applying this I have a video applying it but I I'll leave it linked down below but I definitely recommend utilizing the old school bare minerals technique swirl get lots of it in your brush tap it off and buff it into the skin that's the way you make a powder foundation look nice is you got to buff it in for a long time the more you buff it in the more it melts into the skin and looks natural and mm, it's beautiful another favorite is this this is the moon dust highlighter from siate london i just have like a single pan of it i mentioned this in a video i got this at ipsy live they had a little spin to win in their booth and i won this and in the in the moment i didn't even realize how amazing it was that i won this but now i'm like thank goodness this came into my life this is I don't want to say it's my favorite highlighter because I haven't had it that long, but these days I cannot stop reaching for this. The tone is so beautiful on the skin. It is creamy, like it almost feels buttery. I mean, I know that word is overused when describing cosmetics, but it truly has such an emollient texture to it. And it sits on the skin beautifully. It's glowy, but it kind of has that lit from within look. You can intensify it to be extremely bold or you can wear it a bit softer. It's just a stunning highlight. All right, and this last one, we have favorites and fails in this, and this is the one I mentioned in the beginning. So let's start with the favorite, this brow pomade. I don't think I've used any other brow product since I got this. So this is from Koki. It is just called the Brow Pomade. Now I have the shades Blonde and Medium Brunette. You guys know my hair color situation. It's temporarily brown, but it's staying brown a lot longer than I thought it was. So. When the color was a little bit darker, I was using the shade Medium Brunette. You can kind of see the color right there. However, today, and I would say most days, I use the shade Blonde. I mean, today, maybe I could have gone a little, taken a touch of the Brunette shade, but this is the shade that I wear today, Blonde. Now, I take this with an angled brush. This is the one that I have. This is from IBY, and I just draw on my brows there. This is a million times faster than sitting there with a brow pencil to fill them in. If you are like me and you have naturally sparse brows, let me turn you on to pomades. I always thought that pomades looked too done. It looked like the Instagram brow that was really big a couple years ago. And I didn't think I could use this type of product to achieve more of an everyday brow. But I have this. I think here's the thing. If you go with a color that's too dark, like if I were to always use just the brown shade and I were to apply a lot, that's when you get into that Instagram brow, almost a little bit too done territory. But if you use one that's a nice tone for you, almost a little bit light, not too light where it looks ashy, but just a little bit light, that's when you can fill it in without it looking too stark. And I feel like I've kind of found that perfect middle ground with the shade Blonde. I fill in my eyebrows in half the time that I did before and I'm always way happier with the shape. And I think it's because I'm getting to apply it with an angled brush like this. So it's just easier to draw on and get the right curve to it. Whereas before, I feel like my eyebrow shape would vary so much every day based on the brow pencil I was using because you have to like physically draw it on. Whereas this gives you a little bit more control with the shape you're trying to achieve. 
It lasts beautifully in the brows. Because it's a little bit waxy, it gives them a little bit of texture so they look like real hairs in the brows and not just a bunch of paint stuck in them. And I like to follow that up with another product from the line. This is their brow mascara. This is where the fail comes into play, so just <laughs> wait a second. But the shade I like is the clear brow gel. So this is probably the closest you will get to glue or hairspray for your eyebrows. So I don't think this is for everyone. I would compare this to the e.l.f. brow gel, the clear one, or the Anastasia one, but like both of those to the next level. This is actually hairspray for your eyebrows. Like you can feel it in your eyebrows. They will be stiff. So if you like more of that fluffy boy brow from Glossier type of brow mascara product this is not for you this is not giving you that movable hold this is your brows are stuck they're not moving but for me someone who doesn't have a lot of eyebrows naturally i kind of need that to be the case i can't have my eyebrows moving around i need them to stay where i put them because i don't have a lot of hair to begin with so the clear brow gel is amazing that's a favorite for me but the tinted brow gels from the collection same thing same formula with a tint I would not recommend these. I thought I liked these at first. So I wear the shade of light brown and I also have a blonde one. Okay. When I wear these on camera, they look great because they add a little bit of definition to the brow while still giving it that stick. However, when I've worn these not on camera and I will get a glimpse of myself in the mirror, there's always a chunk of the product that did not get combed out. I don't know if it just has to do with the shape of the brush. It's a little bit larger than most. I always end up with little deposits of brown in my eyebrows. And because of the formula, because it dries down, if you try to comb that out, it is not gonna work. It's gonna kinda like fall down onto the face and smear a little bit. It, it won't comb itself out. So once you have those mistakes, they're they're stuck there so i would not recommend either the tinted ones i found the formula to be pretty disappointing but if you like hair sprayed down eyebrows check out the brow gel the clear one i do have an affiliate code with koki actually i'll pop it on the screen you'll get 25 percent off again love the pomade and the gel i tried the brow pencils from the collection as well i think you guys saw me use those in a video also like i said I haven't used them since then because these are all I'm using. So I'll get back to you on those. That's going to complete my November favorites of the month. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to hear down below what were your favorite products that you tried this past month. I'm so excited for December. November and December are some of my favorite months of the year. So also, if, I, if you didn't see, I made a little announcement on my community tab. I'm going to be doing Vlogmas this year. I'm so nervous. I've never done it before and I'm going to be posting 31 videos in the month of December, one video every single day. I'm not really gonna be doing like vlog style videos. They're gonna be the same style that most of my content is, but it's just gonna be 31 of them. So I'm overwhelmed, but I'm excited. So stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys for Vlogmas starting in December, but thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.